hello, Mark Crossfield here. We're going to do a quick lesson today on um, kind of ideas around learning, how best to go into your lessons. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the concepts of feel and real um, and how that builds around making sure you're trying to get measured when you're having your lessons so you really know what you're doing. Let's get stuck in. So guys, I did a lesson the other day um, with a student and uh, we were using K-Vest. So you're gonna see some graphs, so before you run away, just stick with me, try and stay with me on the grass front here. Um, and what we saw from this student is if we bring up the graph here, what I saw was uh, we see his kinematic sequence. So the sequence, he fires his hips and his shoulders and his hands on the downswing into ball into the ball it wasn't quite right he was getting very much out of sequence so we saw his hips go quite early then we see his hands violently overtaking his shoulders hitting the ball he was very much on the video getting into these kind of positions flippy impacts if you like and then a big push with his shoulders and the kind of shots he was struggling with with poor strikes. I mean, he was struggling to stabilise certainly his upper half of his body into impact and his hips didn't really slow down, which you can kind of see from the graphs here. So if you look at the red line, there's no real peak and then a drop off, which is what you'd want to see in the shape of that graph. So regardless if you understand or not the graph or not, just look at the red line in the graph. You should be seeing on the downswing more of a peak and then a drop off near that dot. Where we don't, we see a peak and then a sustain. And then what we see in the green line is we see, which is the shoulders basically, we see a peak very close or on impact and then a double peak after impact. Where again with the shoulders, we wanna see a peak rotational speed, if you like, of the shoulders happening on the downswing. As you come in and hit the ball, they're slowing down as the arms and the club fire. So his sequence wasn't quite right. If I, I'll bring up a, a, a good sequence, even if you really understand the grass or not, just look at the different patterns in the good player's sequence to his sequence. Now, he is someone who fully understands his idea of the downswing, which lots of you are uh, have, is that he starts his downswing by firing his hips first, then his shoulders, then his hands. So the concept he's got of a downswing is exactly right, exactly what the graphs are trying to say. That's trying to show him if he's doing that or not. So his idea of the graph makes sense, but in execution it doesn't. And then if I show you a second graph here, what we saw is quite a different sequence. So you can see the peak lines, which are those dots, squares and circles at the top of those uh, three coloured lines are peaking more in a correct order, so a bit more one, two, three, so the hip, the shoulders and the hands. Also what we see on the transition sequence, the transition sequence is as soon as he starts his downswing, so as soon as the club changes direction, what's moving in what direction if you like, his transition, transition sequence, even though it's not correct or, or perfect, it's much more in line with where I'd want it. I could do a little bit of separation, but it's much closer to where I'd want it compared to his first one, where we see the hips just going way forwards early, then the hands overtaking uh, the shoulder line. And this is where thinking about when you're in your lessons, trying to open your mind up to different feelings and trying them and giving them a go will really make you better students and improve your golf. He actually, to get him to think the right way, to get his sequence much more coordinated with hips firing first, shoulders firing second, hands firing last, we had to flip it on his head. Rather than him actually feeling like his hips went first, shoulders went second, hands went last, what we did for him is I asked him to go to the top of his backswing, then from there just feel like he's pulling the club down as hard as he can and swinging his arms in front of his body, so his arms forward of his body as fast as he can while staying flat-footed on the floor and coming up after impact with his body. So that's what he felt to get the second graph that we saw. Um, so what he was feeling was actually nothing towards the reality. So for him to get the better measured numbers and then in turn he started to strike the ball considerably more consistent to when he does his normal sequence, we actually had to get him thinking the opposite to what he really thought he was doing, which is what's so interesting, because not only did he do it, it took some persuasion, but I could persuade him, obviously, because I had the data, I could prove to him what was happening. But he was able to execute it, even though it felt wrong to him. As soon as he started striking the ball better that way, 
he was able to take on board that feeling, enjoy that feeling, enjoy the fact of striking that ball a bit better and, and keep running with it, even though it felt wrong. And I think there lies the, uh, the real moral, really, for this lesson. If you want to get better and you want to improve your technique, first of all, you need to think about getting measured. Trapmans, flight scopes, GC2s, launch monitors are great for that. To actually really find out what's happening down by the ball. Uh, biomechanics, kind of KVEST, other systems out there to help you measure and see what's happening and then get that data translated by a decent pro who can help you give you some feelings to hit better shots. Because what's interesting here, with all the tech and the KVEST and the grass, which I know some of you are going to understand these grass and some of you won't, don't worry about that. The fact that I could say something to him as simple as this, all I want you to do is make your backswing and then just throw your hands at it as fast as possible. That's all I said to him. That's basically the language, the sentences I use to help him change his numbers on the tech. Um, so you couldn't get a more simple lesson really than that. The only thing, if I said that to him without the tech, he would have thought I'm slightly mad. To stand there and hit a shot where he feels like he's flat footed, he wouldn't believe that's what you're meant to do. And it isn't what you're meant to do, but that's the feeling he had to achieve actually a more connected impact where his weight was transferring, his hips were opening, his shoulders were opening, they were rotating, just at a very different pace to what he's used to. So again, the moral really is getting measured, because uh, I did a friend on Facebook asking who gets measured and who just hits balls on a field. You know, and lots of people still say, well, you know, the perfect swing isn't perfect for everyone and things like this. If you're getting measured, that doesn't mean we're going to be doing or people are going to be giving you lessons where they're going to be blowing your head off with tech and information. The real skill is trying to get that information interpreted to the student in a way that they can actually digest, use and then change the numbers without them even having to see the grass if they don't want to or they can. Lots of people do actually quite enjoy trying to understand them. But for him, the swing thought was simple. Just swing your arms as fast as you can. If you think about that, it's very obvious really for him. His hips were going ahead of him, if you like, on the downswing. If I get to the top of my backswing and feel like there's a lever here, I'm going to pull it down as hard as possible. Instantly, as I grab this lever to yank, to pull hard on it, my whole left side, my whole body starts to fire to enable that to happen. It's almost like a chain reaction from here up to the hand. It's, in, it's not me just pulling my arms. If I'm going to pull something hard down on a, from up above my head here, my whole body will engage. And for him, he was just engaging his lower half far too early. So interesting video there, guys. Hope that helps. Hope that makes you understand a little bit how things like KVEST and other monitors and stuff can really help your game. Regardless if you fully understand all the graphs and the data and the numbers, you don't have to. Your job is to move the graph and the numbers and the data. And that's your pro skill at giving you information, words, language, whatever that may be that will enable you to move those numbers and then work on feelings to keep those numbers where they are. Thanks for watching guys, hope this helps. Post comments down below, I'd love to know what you think. Are you getting measured? Are you having lessons with people using this kind of tech? Or are you just hitting balls on a field and what works best or not for you? Let me know, post comments and thanks for watching. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also thumbs up the video, post comments, love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.